Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. In our entertainment and pop culture segment brought to you by Romulus Entertainment, we are featuring Broadway actress Lorna Courtney, currently starring as Juliet in New York City's Broadway new hit show, End Juliet. Lorna is a multidisciplinary artist and a native New Yorker from Queens. She graduated from Fiorello LaGuardia High School and received her BFA from the University of Michigan. Today, we're chatting how Shakespeare's Juliet got a second shot and how this new Broadway musical explores life after Romeo. End Juliet is a 2019 coming-of-age stage musical featuring the music of Swedish pop songwriter Max Martin with a book by David West Reed. The story focuses on a what-if scenario where Juliet doesn't die at the end of Shakespeare's Romeo. Now, opening to critical acclaim in London's West End back in 2019, the show was nominated for nine Laurence Olivier Awards in 2020, including Best New Musical. Three of its performers won Olivier's for their performances. It also received a record-breaking 13 nominations at the 2020 What's On Stage Awards, winning six of them. Now, End Juliet is in previews at the Stephen Sondheim Theatre right here in New York City and opens on November 17th. Here to grace us with her beautiful presence is Juliet herself, the beautiful Lorna Courtney. Welcome to the show, Stunner. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, well, you have come such a long way, my dear. This production debuted last summer at the Princess of Wales Theatre in Toronto, where it broke box office records. Now, you returned to the title role, Juliet, on Broadway after drawing rave reviews for your performance in that Toronto production. How does it feel to have finally made it, and how did you book this part? It feels incredible to be able to inspire so many different people, especially young girls and young women. Um, and how did I book this part? Uh, let's see, I was auditioning for a another production, Jagged Little Pill, by the same producer and the same casting director. And I made it until like the final call, callback for that um, production and I didn't get it. And then Anne Juliet came right after that. And I remember reading the script with my best friend and her mom and her mom goes, Lorna, you have to get this. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like being emotional also and crying while reading it because it was just so empowering and uplifting. You are such an emotionally available human being. You are perfect for this part. I, and I know you. I know you. So I must share that you attended one of my acting media workshops back in 2019. How serendipitous, Lorna, is it that we meet again on the air? And I remember saying to you, I'd see you on Broadway right after you had signed your placement contract. So congrats on that. That happened very quickly for you. All right, let's move on to uh, David West Reed. So when David West Reed, uh, the Emmy winning writer of Schitt's Creek, pitched a new musical to songwriting guru Max Martin, who is the force behind mega hits like Katy Perry's Roar and Britney Spears's Baby One More Time, he had an idea to turn a Shakespeare classic on its head. And this industry is all about reviving the old to appeal to a new and younger generation of theater enthusiasts. Uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda effectively showcased this with Hamilton. Talk to me about Juliet not ending her life and instead getting a second chance on her own terms and why this character, Lorna, speaks so much to you and really to today's generation. Her getting a second chance at life, I mean, why not? This is a, a new version of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, one that's never been told. It's David West Reed's modern interpretation of it. And I believe the key part of that is it being modern and contemporary. So if you look at our cast, it's very diverse in all aspects. And with the the representation and the addition of, of, of Max Martin's 90s and 2000s pop hits, it really speaks to today's audience. And so that's why I feel it's the perfect show right now that 
it's just, it's super hilarious and funny and witty and just a whole bunch of fun. Everyone that has seen the show, they, they get out of their seats and they start dancing and they sing along. It's familiar, but unfamiliar because it's a, a new telling of this story that everyone has heard of. It's incredible because once they had Martin's pop songs and, and Wes Reed's book, uh, you know, music supervisor and orchestrator director Bill Sherman, Luke Shepard and Emmy winning choreographer Jennifer Weber, they all signed on. They were like, I want to be part of this. And of course, they also had you. Now, let's chat soundtrack. So the album features a brand new version of Kelly Clarkson's 2004 hit, Since You've Been Gone, performed by you, uh, along with, with Kelly herself. Incredible. What was it like working with her? I mean, so so much pop music is about young love and heartbreak. So Juliet seemed like the ideal character to anchor all of these songs. How can you relate and talk to me about Kelly Clarkson? So Kelly Clarkson, I hear, is a wonderful person. And I actually recorded it in a separate studio. <sighs> for her. So I we didn't get the chance to like sing together. But because we recorded it, there is hope for the future. Oh, I have a feeling yeah. she's going to be visiting you very soon. We'll be uh, performing together. So, yeah. And, you know, the idea of second chances, let's go back to that, really spoke mm -hmm. to David West Reed, right? Because Juliet didn't have much of a shot the first time. We all know that. And there's something about second chances, really, that everyone can relate to, myself, yourself, everyone included, especially given what we have been going on through as, as a culture these past few years. So I think you are the perfect Juliet. Now, you were also emboldened by by Anne Hathaway's story in and Juliet. Now, not Anne Hathaway, we're talking about the actress, but Shakespeare's wife. So let's let's piggyback. So Anne Hathaway's story, right? So Shakespeare's wife. You were quoted saying that my character is a reflection of Anne's character. We parallel. She gives me a second chance, and I find my voice through her magic of rewriting the story. Please explain. Okay, how can I explain without giving too much away? Um, so, Romeo and Juliet is, of course, Shakespeare's play. But in our version, Anne comes in and says, uh, actually, I think that it can have a better ending and some things can, can change. So she takes his quill and she starts rewriting things. And, of course, Shakespeare gets, like, upset and... He takes it back but whenever she has the quill and the power is in her hands my story she gives me a second chance and at love at life at friendship and it's it's beautiful it's wonderful and those are the that's the same chance that she wishes that she had because her relationship with Shakespeare is also facing challenges just like my relationship with Romeo is facing challenges. So that's what I meant by they they parallel. We're we're sort of on this journey together. It's incredible that that you find so much depth and meaning in in script and that's what makes you such a good actor because you actually find these emotional connections, you embody them, and then you go out there and you sing your heart out and perform with so much grace and poise because you are actually feeling the character. And it's what we've all also have, have learned in conservatory training from the beginning of time. I myself attended Stella Adler and Lee Strasberg, and this is true theater at its best. So when I say picture this, right, it's, it's 19, it's, 1595 and William Shakespeare has just finished Romeo and Juliet and, and this epic play is about to be performed for the first time and and he explains to his wife Anne Hathaway uh, that that you know this is what's going down and, and I love the connection that you made she has some notes and ideas on how to change the ending and mm -hmm. that what if Juliet didn't end her life and what if she got a second chance on her own terms is what you're playing out today. So what an incredible, yeah. like, full circle. All right, what does your performance and rehearsal schedule look like? It usually, usually we'll have rehearsals around or between one and five. And then at night, we'll have the show right now in previews. But in a couple of weeks, we'll be adding in two extra matinees during the week. So we'll have eight shows during the week. And rehearsals um, during the day. 
your whole life is on stage, Lorna, and you have to love what you do to be able to accept that. At this point right now, you are serving Broadway, kiddo. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. So if there's one thing, uh, one piece of advice that you could give to your younger self, what would it be? I think that I would give the same advice I would give to myself now, which is just to, to trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and to keep going because we're going to get many no's in life, but you can't give yourself a no, you know, you always have to say yes and, and keep going and find another way. I love it. Well, we are out of time, my darling, but thank you so much for coming on, for chatting with me, for talking to me about this incredible journey. And I can't wait to see you perform. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was so fun. Make sure you check out End Juliet at the Stephen Sondheim Theater right here in New York City. And Juliet audiences will definitely get what they would from a pop concert, including pyrotechnics and glitter. People seem to be genuinely moved and transcended with an experience that really only happens in live theater. And Juliet opens on November 17th. Head to their website, andjulietbroadway.com, and definitely follow the beautiful Lorna at Lorna A. Courtney all over social media. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. That was our entertainment and pop culture segment brought to you by Romulus Entertainment. We'll be right back after this.